And welcome to another special edition of Trader Talk TV coming from New Mexico. Today we have Gilles and Thomas. Gentlemen, thanks very much for coming today. Today we're going to talk about programmatic TV. Uh, before that, just I'll let these fine gentlemen introduce themselves and then we'll jump straight into the topic. Uh, I'm Gilles Chetula, I'm co-founder of TKS TV, a company that's been recently purchased by Freewill. Uh, a company that everybody knows belongs to Comcast and um, we're happy to be here. Thank you for having us. And I'm Thomas Bremont, I'm the Managing Director for Freewill in Europe. Excellent. So gentlemen, today we're going to talk about programmatic TV and sort of how it's evolving in its market. So just get your sort of overview in a minute in Europe. Like talk about programmatic TV, how it's been, what the uptake's been, are we seeing great developments there? Like, start with you, Thomas. Yeah, sure. So when we talk about programmatic TV, it's important to start where, um, why it's actually a topic, why yeah. it's a hot topic. And we've seen it start in the US really for the main reason of you look at the broadcasts and you know, cable market, it's under attack, yeah. quite frankly. And it's under attack for a very simple reason, is that you have very large new media entrants who are coming with very um, data-centric models yeah. who everybody knows haven't been something in TV yeah. for a while. And so the TV markets looked at that and said, if we don't do anything, these guys are going to steal our lunch. Yeah. So that's the first uh, prerogative and the start of why all these conversations around programmatic TV happen. And then you have to look at what is the model that's going to put, put itself in place. And the, the key thing is around data, but who owns that data and who can share that data to make it happen. And when we look at programmatic TV and being part of Comcast and owning NBC as well, as far as Comcast is concerned, it's a very important and interesting topic. And how uh, operators who effectively own the consumer relationship and the data in the set-top box and broadcasters who actually own the content and distribute the content through these platforms need to interact to create that value. And in the US, we've seen these models start to emerge around data sharing yeah. and data enablement. In Europe, it's taking a little bit more time just because of the historical relationship. What but that's the key thing to happen to make programmatic TV work. And is, I mean, obviously European landscape looks a lot different from the US landscape and the fragmentation is different here. So do you think it's going to be a slower pace here, Gilles, the uptake of that? It's just that the environment is going to be different and I think in the US it's a lot about uh, OTT, uh, how you can uh, get the, uh, the ads into the boxes and into this environment uh, that gets to the, to the homes in the end. Yeah. In Europe uh, there's much more of an environment where the telcos are playing a key and central role. So it's about uh, making sure they uh, get to understand and that they get involved into the uh, ad tech environment of how we can deliver and add properly on uh, TV so channels. Let's, let's just state that one. <clears throat> I was at a, a conference there last week around programmatic TV and it was interesting talking to both the buy side and the sell side. And the buy side asked them, why are you guys pushing this? Are you, is all the push coming? No. And I, and it's coming from the sell side. But it's interesting to see those particular players doing that. Is this more of a defensive move rather than progressive move, Donna? Well, so if you look at the buy side and where they've been making their money yeah. forever, and it's been TV, right? And the, what's worked in TV is reach, right? So you buy a big media plan on TV, you buy reach, and effectively what data and addressability allow you is to get into deep, into breadth as opposed to depth, right? Yeah. Um, and so the, the key question is, is there a model that works for agency and the sell side that includes data, which is going to effectively make those campaigns more targetable, therefore, you know, more narrow in terms of focus and less of, let's call it wastage, uh, what yeah. people refer to as yeah. wasted in, wastage in TV. So that's the interesting factor. The other thing to consider, as Gilles was mentioning around the operator, is operators in Europe haven't had any ad tech or any advertising model. When you mean operators, you mean the, the people who operate I mean, the data, the data sort of... I mean, holders. telco operators yeah. who own the set-top box relationship yeah. to the client. They, these haven't been advertising based businesses. In and it's a big revenue have. opportunity for them, do you think? Like, so, I mean, like the telcos are an interesting one because at the show on, on Monday we were talking about strategic uh, you know, acquirers in the in space and the telcos were, 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 no, were highlighted and they have an amazing amount of data but their, their core business is flatlined. So do you think this is a big opportunity for them to sort of open up this space, like look at it, where are the gatekeepers, the, the set-top box data, for instance? I think telcos are realizing today that uh, they might be sitting on the mango the data set that they do have. It's the unique data set. Uh, they are probably the only guys uh, out into this ecosystem who can really identify clearly 
who is the same user across different devices. Yeah. And uh, so they think they have something, they think they can make money out of it. Yeah. So I don't think it's a defensive move, it's more exploring an opportunity for them and see if they can make use of that. And how, that do, you, how do you think they would get into this space? I mean, are, they, are you seeing this already, Tom? I mean, how are they making their way in? Is it the case that they use the data and build their own exchanges or do they sort of work with buy side and that side? So there's kind of two answers to that. If you look at the what's happening in the US, it's very easy because the way their deals are worked with the programmers, they get a share of the advertising minutes and then they effectively monetize these minutes. So yeah. Comcast has a big local sales house that monetizes, or Comcast Spotlight, that monetizes local inventory that's given to them by the programmer. So they have existing businesses that know and understand how to monetize TV and the equivalent digital uh, inventory. In Europe, that doesn't exist. So that's the first thing for them to do is understand how that model works. Yeah. Then if you look at the fundamental issue for them is if TV advertising goes down at the programmer level, so if you know, money doesn't come as, as you know, easily as it's come before, they're gonna turn to the operator and say, you need to give me more money to carry my channels. So for them, they have to react, otherwise it's, it's, it's a losing game for yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, your, your company made a number of acquisitions yourself, and then obviously, can you talk about that? Let's talk about that for a minute and how you're building the ultimate TV, programmatic TV stack. How has that acquisition gone and what was, the, what was the rationale for buying both companies actually? Let's start with you, Jill, first. Uh, it's, it's going super well, frankly. Um, we are in front of a massive opportunity. Massive. Uh, massive because- $300 uh, billion dollar opportunity. <laughs> exactly, and uh, the two teams together, uh, Freewheel and Sticky, has 700 people focusing exclusively on the supply yes. to make sure that we make this well compliant with the expectations of the people who want to take the ad money from the programmatic TV, basically. And uh, that's more than 300 people uh, that are engineers, software engineers, focusing on that topic every day. And I don't think there are many companies in the field who can say there are that many to focus on that one topic. Yeah. So it's very exciting. Two things about the acquisitions. What was obvious, and uh, if you ha we had this interview uh, just after the acquisition, what was obvious? I remember doing the interview last year and I was talking to your uh, exactly. colleague right here and I said, you're going to get acquired. Is this just when you had the, 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 uh, the relationship person? I had a perfect marriage, I was saying. Definitely going to happen. Exactly. Last year we announced a partnership. It was already obvious that uh, the two tech stacks were very uh, complementary and combining both techs uh, where was combining the, the best of both worlds, yeah. right? Uh, direct sales and, uh, and generated uh, demand generated from the market, yeah. what we call programmatic, basically. Uh, what we didn't know before this acquisition, and I, I can comment on, is that the people side of the acquisition uh, has been uh, playing a very instrumental role. Everybody is very positive, uh, looking at this future. And we are really committed to make this happen. Yeah. And uh, in the end, this combination of tech and people who are getting along super well, frankly, is already getting the results we are expecting and we're expecting maybe later. Uh, we are winning customers together already with the two stacks, with the full fledged solution. Um, we'll be announcing that soon. Yeah, <laughs> Not more today. news coming. Not today. Um, we are already delivering features that are making, taking advantage of uh, having this full stack um, in terms of price awareness, yeah. uh, in terms of uh, managing compliance, competitive yeah. separation. All this for the supply side and for the TV bro broadcasters are I mean, the very TV, key topics. The TV space is a much different space from the typical display. Uh, it's, a very, you know, it's a very nuanced space. It's a, it's a way of doing business for the last you know, 60, 70 years. Do you think you have that stack now, Thomas? Does that, does that help you sort of provide the service you can? Like? So, a bit about Freewheel for, if you don't know, is we, so we've been in the US for the last nine years. We've yeah. only come to Europe about a couple of years ago. And in the US- and you work with some big broadcasts like RTE, for instance, uh, yeah, in Ireland. Exactly, yeah, 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 yeah. So, but the US has been our core market. We've, we, you know, in the past, have been providing very dedicated services to broadcasters and yeah. operators, right? So we, we don't have as many clients as Sticky Ads does because we've been focusing on the TV industry yeah, and make that um, effectively keep its value. But those clients could probably work with you as well. There's and, an and it's very that. important. I mean, you know, as Gilles was talking about the, the acquisition, 
when our clients came to us about a year and a half ago and said, you know, we like what you've done for us on the direct sold business. Yeah. It's great, it's working fine. But now we need to take that into the programmatic environment because we do feel that it's becoming more important. Yeah. The market's asking for it. Yeah. But we are broadcasters, we have limited supply, very premium, yeah. and it's TV needs to be protected, yeah. right? Which means, which means TV has rules, yeah. compliance. You can't put a Coke ad yeah. you know, twice in, a, in an ad pod. You can't put a, a Peugeot ad next to a Renault ad. Or, yeah. Those are basic different, rules. Different logic. Different logic, uh, different logic yeah. but you know, things that, you, that have been happening in TV for a very long time, yeah. that when you come to digital, it's hard to make happen yeah. if you're combining direct sold and programmatic, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is why when we combine the tech stacks, we looked at this and said, you know what, we have a real opportunity to build something that effectively works very seamlessly yeah. for the programmer, yeah. for the large broadcasters, as well as you know, people that have been more traditionally working with Sticky mm -hmm. that can benefit from this. But yeah. generally for the broadcaster and operator world, it's the opportunity for them to get the same kind of um, technology that they've had from free will on the direct sold market and apply that to their programmatic generated demand. And, and so, obviously you can see your clients moving that way as well, I mean, and hence the reason why adding sticky to the mix mid sense. It's very important, and as you say, we go back to the initial topic. That is the first step to doing programmatic TV. Yeah. If you solve programmatic in VOD, environments or IP environments, right? So VOD, set-top box VOD, catch-up TV, live streaming, ad insertion. If you solve that, you know, the combination of direct sold and programmatic in those environments, it's the natural you know, stepping stone to TV. Yeah. And do you, so the final question is, where do you see the market developing here in Europe? And how do you see it developing? Obviously, you guys are obviously preparing for that by you know, your parent company buying you initially and then buying Sticky. Um, are you seeing the market move in that direction? In the next 12 months, are we going to be talking about a lot of clients doing programming on TV? We're going to see the whole landscape change. Is that, is that how you see it? Um, I'll give you my two cents. So Comcast bought you know, Free Will, then Sticky Ads, um, because it needed it yeah. for... For its own... For its own, you know, it has NBC, yeah, it yeah. has its own it has business. Company, so yeah. as I said before, it, in order to sort of compete adequately with the new media giants, it needs its own infrastructure yeah. and it needs its own tech. Yeah. We're seeing that in Europe with you know, a few investments from key broadcasters, but at the end of the day, those are becoming very expensive investments. Absolutely. Right? It's a, it's a, bill and tech is a, is a huge outlay. Like. Yeah, and if scale isn't justifying those investments, so you, you know, there's only a very few number of players in Europe that yeah. can justify. So for us, it's a great opportunity to come in with a, a, a stack that has been built for Comcast, for NBC, that has enough scale, you know, obviously and, and it's actually works as well. Yeah, and yeah. it's trusted by a very large yeah. media group and bring that expertise to yeah. European programmers and operators who, quite frankly, don't have the scale to make the same kind of investments yeah. that Comcast Absolutely. has made. See that, finally, next year, this will become a programmatic TV uh, uh, conference uh, exhibition. Is that what we're going to see? Like lots of, lots of uh, media companies here talking about their programmatic TV. Yeah, I mean, I fully align with what Thomas said on programmatic TV. I mean, it's about scale. In Europe, uh, they think a lot about winning this battle uh, to get the ad money in programmatic TV. Uh, because that's the only big battle that has do not been won yet by yeah. anybody. And uh, it's pretty much an open field at the minute, like. Exactly. Know? So uh, everybody is looking at this opportunity to. Uh, to play a bigger role at scale globally, and that's what uh, programmatic TV means. It's automation, compliance, it's uh, multi-screen, it's uh, better targeting. So a lot of benefits for the advertisers, for uh, TV broadcasters, and um, many players want to play a role in that. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, great to hear about the acquisition. Congratulations again. Uh, and that was uh, Turner Talk TV, and we'll see you next time.